Salamun alaykum, dear Muslim believers, and may Allah's mercy and blessings be upon you and all the Hunafa'a. In this video, we'll be seeing a new miracle that most people do not know about, and that is the miracle of Mecca and its location on earth through the Quran. This will also certify that Mecca is the location of Al Masjidul Haram, the sacred or forbidden mosque, which is the authorized Qibla direction of prayer, salah, that Allah commanded us to follow and not in Jerusalem nor Petra. So before we see the sign and miracle of Mecca, I will clarify an important claim. Some are claiming that the Qibla of many mosques, not all, of the first century after Hijrah are not facing towards the Kaaba, the sacred mosque, masjid, accurately, but rather in the direction of Jerusalem in favor of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, or in the direction of Petra, which frankly, Jerusalem and Petra are pretty much next to each other, meaning there isn't a significant distance between the two. Petra, on the other hand, has received a lot of attention recently and is now being debated as being the original and correct Qibla, the direction of prayer, Salah, instead of Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. In other words, some misguided ones are claiming that the correct Qibla, direction of prayer Salah, should either be in Jerusalem or Petra because some of the first century after Hijrah masjids are not aiming towards Al Masjid Al Haram, that is in Mecca. That is their main argument. The rest are based on false hadiths that we who follow the words of Allah do not believe in. Nonetheless, there are some masjids within the first century after Hijrah that their Qiblas are aiming towards Al Masjid Al Haram in Mecca. But the problem for those who believe the Qibla should be towards Jerusalem or Petra is that why aren't the majority of the masjids of the first century after Hijrah facing towards Mecca if that is the correct Qibla? Thus, there's a confusion between them and this isn't a new problem nor new debate. This has already occurred during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and it's mentioned in the Quran where the Qibla is also clarified in Surah Baqarah 2, verse 142 to 150. The fools among mankind shall say, What has turned them from their Qibla, which they were used to it? Say, To Allah belong the East and the West. He guides whoever He wills to a straight path. Notice that Allah informs us that the fools will ask that question and the verb to say is in the future tense. Sayaqulu. It is clear that there was a different Qibla than the one in al masjid Al-Haram in Mecca as they say. Their Qibla which they were used to it in the past tense. And the next verse illustrates this and gives us a key description of where Prophet Muhammad and those with him were located. And thus, we made you a middle nation, Ummatan Wasata, Ummatun Wasat, so that you will be witnesses over mankind and the messenger will be a witness over you. And we didn't make the Qibla which you were used to it, except for us to know who follows the messenger from those who reverses back on both of his heels. And indeed, it was certainly difficult, a great thing except for those who are guided by Allah. And Allah was not to waste your faith, belief. Indeed, Allah is with mankind, surely compassionate, merciful. First, note that this verse, Surah 2 verse 143, which is the middle verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, which has 286 verses, says that Allah made Prophet Muhammad and those following him a middle nation, Ummatan Wasata or Ummatun Wasat. If you look at the map, Mecca is right in the middle of the Hijazi region. That is a clear sign. There is no obvious way to identify a middle for Jerusalem, which is in Israel, nor Petra, that is in Jordan. The second thing to notice is that this verse confirms that there was a different Qibla, as it says, and we didn't make the Qibla which you were used to it. Hence, a different Qibla. And right after it says why Allah changed it. 
except for us to know who follows the messenger from those who reverses back on both his heels. And finally, this verse informs us that it was a difficult matter, a great thing, a great test. And indeed, it was certainly difficult. Lakabira, a great difficult thing. Except for those who are guided by Allah. That explains it. Now, the next verse will explain why Prophet Muhammad and those following him did not want to face towards the previous Qibla, which we will see which one it was and what the new Qibla is that Allah commanded us to follow. Definitely, we see you turning your face towards the sky, searching for the right Qibla. So surely, we will definitely turn you to a Qibla that you will be pleased with. Tardaha. Henceforth, turn your face in the half portion direction, shatar, of the sacred or forbidden mosque, al masjid al haram. And wherever you were, turn your faces in its half portion direction, shatara. And indeed, those who were given the book surely know that it is the truth from your Lord. And Allah is never unaware of anything they do. As you can see, the Prophet was not pleased nor satisfied with the previous Qibla. Hence the saying, We will definitely turn you to a Qibla that you will be pleased with. That is because the other Qibla pertains to those whom Allah's wrath was upon them, the Jews, and those who went astray, the Christians. Before we see what their Qibla was, we now have the command from Allah to aim towards the sacred or forbidden mosque, Al-Masjidul Haram, a different direction from what they were used to. What's very important here is the fact that Allah did not say to aim accurately, Bidiqa, either 95 to 99% accuracy, towards the sacred or forbidden mosque, Al-Masjidul Haram, but rather he used the word Shatr which literally means something that is cut in half, divided into two, a half portion, etc. And in context of aiming, it involves at least 50% accuracy, which is why I translate it as the half portion direction, shatar of al-Masjid al-Haram. That is absolutely critical to pay attention to because most of these masjids, masajids, of the first century after Hijrah are aiming with at least a 50% accuracy. Shatr. And that actually ends this argument of most mosques of the first century after Hijrah are not aiming accurately. This is also repeated five verses later in Surah Baqarah verse 149 to 150. This is such a perfect wording that Allah chose, Shatr, because there is no way that man during the 6th to 8th century or the first 200 years after Hijrah can aim accurately because they did not have the right tools nor advanced technology to do so. Astrolabes were introduced around the 8th century, so between the year 701 to 800. They were mastered around the 9th century, between 801 to 900. Mastered because it took almost a century to properly evolve into a precise tool and design. There were a lot of mistakes to overcome. Even with accurate astrolabes, you still can't accurately aim towards Mecca let alone precisely Al-Masjid Al-Haram, because you must have a real accurate topography from where you are located all the way to Mecca. The only way to do that is with aerial photography. You cannot rely only on the stars, nor sunrise, nor sunset. That is for navigation purposes, not aiming accurately like a bullseye. Thus, being able to navigate versus being able to aim precisely are two completely different things. Something that these misguided ones have a serious problem understanding. Once you can see the huge difference, it will be very obvious. I hope now you realize how perfect the word shatar is that Allah applied in Surah Baqarah, verse 144, 149, and 150. Additionally, many have asked, why doesn't Mecca appear on early maps until the 9th century? The first thing to keep in mind when this question is raised is that the purpose of Mecca is to identify Al-Masjid Al-Haram. You may have noticed that I translated as the sacred or forbidden mosque. Depending on context, Haram has many meanings, but here it can mean both, sacred and forbidden. 
Al-Masjidul Haram is a forbidden mosque that Allah has authorized during the revelations of the Quran. Thus, it's absolutely normal that you wouldn't find it on earlier maps until the 9th century. Especially the fact that Allah informs us that the idol worshippers, the polytheists, mushrikins, are not to approach Al-Masjidul Haram after the revelation of verse 28 in Surah 9, Tawbah, which mentions that. It's a forbidden and sacred location for the Muslims only. Al-Masjidul Haram. Henceforth, these verses from Surah 2, Baqarah, verse 142 to 144, actually clarifies this confusion of why the majority of the Masjid's Qiblas of the first century after Hijrah aren't facing towards Mecca accurately. Because it was surely a great test from Allah to see who follows the Messenger from those who reverses back on both of his heels and only those who are guided by Allah passed this test. Some of them were aiming the wrong way, the misguided ones, while others were aiming with a 50% accuracy, shatr, proving they were guided by Allah. Now the original Qibla that everyone was used to was the one before the Quran was revealed. In other words, the one that the Jews and the Christians, the children of Israel, were prescribed to. And that is Al-Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, as said in Surah 5, Al-Maidah, verse 21. Al-Ardul Muqaddasa is not where Al-Masjidul Haram is located, in Mecca, but rather in Israel, Jerusalem, and it has been through many wars, invasions, and colonization due to its religious value. Al-Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, was prescribed to the children of Israel during Prophet Musa's time, and they, the children of Israel, had refused to enter it then and were forbidden to enter for 40 years while wandering in the earth. Before the Quran was revealed, there were many disputes among them, the Jews and the Christians, of what the right Qibla should be in Jerusalem. And some of them did not follow each other's Qibla, as said in the next verse. And even if you brought to those who were given the book with every kind of sign, miracle, they will not follow your Qibla, nor will you be a follower of their Qibla. Some of them are not followers of each other's Qibla. And if you follow their opinions, desires, after the knowledge that has come to you, indeed, you will surely be among the transgressors, wrongdoers. It can't get any clearer than that. Therefore, it is clear that there are at least two Qiblas, Al-Masjidul Haram, which Allah authorized, and their Qibla, Jerusalem, Al-Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, what the Jews claim, or Petra, as certain Christians claim. However, Allah has commanded us to choose the former, Al-Masjidul Haram in Mecca. This brings us to an important question. How do we know Al-Masjidul Haram is located in Mecca? First, in the Quranic context, Mecca, Mecca, is mentioned in Surah 48, Surah Al-Fat, the victory, verse 24 which directly connects to the next verse, 25, that mentions Al-Masjidul Haram, proving that they are directly linked. There is no link like this for Al-Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, and Petra is not even mentioned in the Quran, nor is there any direct link like Mecca has in Surah 48 verse 24 to 25 to Al-Masjidul Haram, the authorized Qibla. Besides that clear evidence of the mentions of Mecca with Al-Masjidul Haram in Surah 48 verse 24 to 25, there's one more powerful sign and miracle that Al-Masjidul Haram is located in Mecca, in modern Saudi Arabia. And this brings us back to the miracle of Mecca. 